Brooklyn. I've spent half of my life in this fine city and yet never got around to filming at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. It wasn't for lack of trying, but just difficulty pinning down a good time. But that's all changed because I finally had an opportunity to sync up with the fine folks there and take a stroll through the conservatories, starting with their tropical pavilion. My name is Shauna Moore, and I'm the Director of Horticulture here at Brooklyn Botanic Garden, and we are in the Tropical Pavilion. And we're gonna see a beautiful array of plants from all over the world, but really more specifically, there are a lot of plants here that the folks can grow indoors as really great house plants. There are a lot of permanent pieces in this collection, but there are also a lot of seasonal pieces that interchange out throughout spring and summer, fall, and as they bloom and come in and out of season. We have a fantastic, talented group of gardeners that maintain all of the conservatory pavilions. I've been here with BBG for not quite a year, um, and, and my expertise is r roses. Um, oh, so, um, this, this is, is different This is for kind you. of um, a different wheelhouse, but I do love all the plants that are under glass. I love the tropicals. I love orchids, and I'm just so thrilled to be here. So what's the most tropical of our roses? <laughs> oh, got, you know, a lot of the old garden roses in our collection, not here, but yeah. of course in the rose garden. Because so. when I think of like in the actual rosa, there's not that many tropicals. No, like, it no, really is you know, a colder it, plant. It, there's mm. actually a rose in almost Temperate. every single continent. Mm. Um, and, and roses you know, are, are, are probably, as we know from DNA, um, all from China. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, most certainly we've got um, a, a lot of um, the, the roses that are, um, are, are more, um, are, are hardy to zones nine, mm. and um, a lot of the, the um, Bermuda roses and, um, Lots of the old garden roses, which um, you know come from France, um, the centifolias, um, and the the bourbons, things of that nature. But nothing terribly tropical, <laughs> you know. They're just they're just kind of fussy to grow. Yeah. But um, well, let's let's do a little tour. Take us through. Yes. So um, you know, so in general, we've got again a lot of these really fabulous plants that you can find in really reputable plant nurseries. So the spathophyllum or peace lily is such a good plant. It's such a tried and true. It will take low light, indirect light. It sends up these fantastic flowers. This is always, a lot of people say this is kind of a funeral flower plant, but I think it, it gets that reputation for a reason. It's a really great gift to give someone who has lost a friend or a four-legged friend because these live on forever and ever. And they're really, again, very easy care. And, and they let you know when they're thirsty. They wilt. And they do recover quite easily with a, a little bit of water. Well, this one is right actually next to a little watering system. I don't know if it gets drips of water right there, but I think you'd typically see these in kind of moist understories or riverine. Yes. I've seen spathophyllums that are a bit more riverine as well that yes. are growing around. Yep, um, but um, a beauty, a yeah. real fantastic plant. And some aspidistras right here. Yes. Another um, good low light plant. Oh, for sure. Cast iron plant, you know, common name. Uh, did you know that the other common name was ashtray plant? Ashtray I, plant? Yes. No, I mean, I it's had no really idea. an unfortunate common name, but I, I think because they're so easy to grow and so adaptable to low light, aspidistras are, you know, found in a lot of office settings, you know, in, in containers, in office buildings, and in 50s and 60s when you're able to smoke indoors. Mm. It's a good place to put your, your cigarette butt. Oh my gosh. No, never. No. <laughs> Look at that Tillandsia just hanging up from your head. <laughs> Fantastic. Amazing. Look at that. All of these Gorgeous. roots in, in the air. They're just really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. We have lots and lots of philodendrons also, um, all different types of species and lots of cultivars. On trend, I think, you know, for a, a, a few years, especially Absolutely. when COVID was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And not going away anytime soon. People really? love their aeroids. Yeah. This is interesting. This West Indian holly. Kind of look at those leaves. Yeah, very beautiful. The foliage is really dark and. It's got canes, almost like mm -hmm. a bamboo. Mm -hmm. And then it has these really long internodes, and it kind of almost looks like a 
it's ambucous, like an it, elder it, berry. It does. But, it, but, it sort of has that, that lacy foliage. Yeah. But it's in the grape family, which is also an unusual feature. I mean, you would think that it would have more of a vining, vining structure. Yeah. But um, not pretty. And it's really, the color on it is phenomenal. I mean, it's not even a cultivar. It's just that color. Straight. Yeah. My goodness, look at the, the muscular nature of this tree. Kind of reminds us, m reminds me of our muscle wood, but like more muscly. Oh yeah, I mean, gorgeous bark. Yeah, yeah. almost like a carpinus. Um, yes. But um, yeah, just fantastic. Those bones are just amazing in there. If a tree were being drawn by Michelangelo, oh yeah, this might be the tree. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> the David. Of, yeah, yeah, the David of trees. <laughs> Yes, also it's in the dogbane family, a so it's mm -hmm. related to our milkweeds. Right. Does this have a latex as well, like our yes. milkweeds? Yes. And one of those really cool long seed pods, maybe. Right. Fascinating. Okay. It's always nice to see, like you just said, with that uh, grape plant, you think it would be vining. Right. Well, in a Posinaceae, you think it would be more herbaceous, you know? It's a woody plant. I mean, yeah. you know, the genus is so diverse. Are those some papayas growing there? Yes. Oh, nice. Look at how gorgeous those are. Yeah. These gingers are looking <laughs> very nice. There's some good gingers that you can grow indoors as well. Really? I know that there's good ones you can grow outdoors for containers. Amaryllis, beautiful, a seasonal part of our display. These kind of remind me of a creamier white version of a peacock lily. Oh, yeah. And then this is some metanilla. Looks like it's going to fruit. Mm. What's this white? It's an acanthus. Look at those flowers. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like a long-tongued moth might mm. enjoy pollinating that plant. Mm. I'm always uh, curious why the why uh, botanic gardens plant these so close to where people walk. <laughs> yeah, probably you know it, it, it's an indicator you know keep out maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, these are mean. Quite remarkable. What is an orange berry? Fascinating. Oh, I see. They look like uh, little currants. I so, don't know. Yeah. They look um, edible. You first. Probably poisonous. Yeah, our friends in India and the Philippines will be able to tell us. Sanchezia. I had tried to grow this and it succumbed eventually to mealy bugs and oh, and uh, mealy's a tough one and, and spider mites. It was a oh. it was a spider mite and mealy bug magnet. Oh, did you have yeah. to say goodbye? I had to. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was it was too much work. Yeah, but this is a our vanilla bean orchid. It was very successfully pollinated by our gardener, plant curator, um, Kate Murphy here. So you'll be getting some pods, is yes. what you're saying. Here's another philodendron. Isn't that a pretty one? Yeah, I like it. I like the, it's got this bird's nest shape and then all that veination. It's very pretty. Chinese taro, which is edible. I love this one. Yeah, the shrimp. Great. Thing. It's nice. It's like a, it's like a sub shrub, you know. Yes. Kind of Good often understory. See it in understories. Yes. Yeah. Remind me, is this Ruelia or what is? Yes. Yeah. Makoyana maybe. Yeah, Ruelia Makoyana. Very good. You know, lots of little aglonemas also in this collection that really kind of brighten up a dark spot. Mm. Look at the. Uh, muscular nature of the Ooh. philodendron. Now there's a cultivar name called Fat Boy. Ah, really? <laughs> yeah. But this one is very robust. It's you really have nice to have to the see. space. Yeah.
still see plenty of places where you could plant. Yeah. <laughs> There's, yeah, there's, I've, and, and so did the gardeners. And there's always more to add and, yeah. and um, lots of holes. So this looks like another spathophyllum, but with like a much wider leaf? Yes. Sensation is the cultivar on this okay. one. And look at that beautiful flower. Right, that's pretty it's a, a big girl. Good space. This palm is an example of somebody who's kind of outgrown the space. Yeah, look at that. Um, fortunately, we have succession plantings um, in, uh, in the back of the house. And so I think for the health of the collection and the health of the plant, this is going to have to come down and we're going to have to replace it with something that's something, yes. something more of size. Sustainable. Yeah. So how does something like that get done? Do you have somebody who comes in and slowly chops off the top and then... Our tree gardeners here at PBG that take care of all of the trees along the collection or among the collection here, indoors and outdoors. And so in the wintertime, they do a lot of pruning, they'll do a lot of climbing and, and some takedowns mm -hmm. on some of the bigger trees that we have in all of the conservatory spaces. Now this one looks urticaceous. This one right here, but another acanthus. Oh, this is a tropical acanthus. Our bear's breeches doesn't look this pointy. <laughs> I thought it was urticaceous initially because I was like, look at how nettle-like this looks, <laughs> but it's not. Another beautiful plant, the tafeta plant, Hoffmania. Difficult to grow indoors, but a fantastic looking plant. This is one of the biggest Asplenium I, that I, I have seen. Very healthy. At Brooklyn Botanic Gardens, do you do a lot of the propagation here yourself, or how does it work? We do some of the propagation here ourselves. You know, we again, we always want succession plantings, and so if we see something that is maybe ending its um, expiration date, um, we'll, we'll make sure that we propagate and, and have um, you know, a, a succession planting to follow behind um, when uh, we decide to, to re remove or deaccession something from our collection. But we do source a lot of our, our plant materials from, from nurseries in Florida. Mm -hmm. Is this one of the strong elodian vines? Looks yes. Like the bright blue flowers. Yes. Oh, I'm trying to encourage it to grow yeah. through. I love seeing those in flower. It's so gorgeous. And this looks like a philodendron rugosum doing its thing, climbing up the tree. And this is getting pretty tall, too. It's a big one. Yep, yeah. just had a little bit of pruning done on it, but maybe not enough. And same with that ficus, that fiddle leaf fig. Is yep, just goes to show you where it would go if you gave it the if room. If you gave it enough room and a, a, enough light and water, yep. And this also just goes to show you that you can never have a big enough greenhouse. And here's some of your aglionema again that have a bit more of a greener tone. And then here you could see how it just transitions into more silvery foliage. and some of your more modest-sized aspleniums. Now, is this one of your cycads? Yes. Isn't that fabulous? Mm -hmm. These little bitty philodendrons moving through. And that's a cissus, it looks like. Quadrangularis, maybe. And here's another. Phenomenal. Thank you so much for the tour. You're welcome. Thank you. More plant tips and tours are around the corner here at Plant One On Me. So be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when our videos release. And if you'd care to support the channel, give a tip, or better yet, become one of our illustrious sustaining members. We also have a suite of online houseplant courses up on our website at homesteadbrooklyn.com. See you in the next video.